Today we are going to be learning how to uh, summarize quantitative variables with frequency and relative frequency distributions. And we're also going to be exploring how to display frequency distributions utilizing histograms and frequency polygons. And also uh, at the end we will look at a cumulative frequency polygon. So let's get started. Uh, the data that we're using for this is um, the sales from a used car lot over the past year. And uh, we're going to be exploring um, all of this information utilizing that data. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to determine the number of cases that we're working with. In this case, uh, the number of uh, uh, automobiles that were sold over the past year. And so if you notice right here, um, all of these, I should uh, highlight my formulas for you, um, all of these formulas uh, represent the actual formula that, I, that I'm putting in uh, the box to the left of it. So we're going to do equals count, and then we're just going to, like that, and it tells us that there's a total of 360 cars that were sold uh, this past year. Okay, so equals, uh, the next thing that we have to do is find the minimum number, in other words, the smallest uh, number in this, uh, in this group. So 234, so there was one car that they sold that they only made $234. Uh, on and it's possible that they could have even lost money, but in this particular year they did not lose any money on any cars. Next we have to find max. Uh, so there's one car that they sold that they made $4,164. And the reason why we need to find the min and the max really is because we need to find the range. So the range is equals max minus min and that gives us $3,930 is the range. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is determine the number of classes uh, that we are going to break this up into. So in a frequency distribution, um, you know, we have 360 cases. 360 cases is a little too much to, you know, do a graphic uh, representation of um, you know, 360 individual cars. So we kind of break it up and we say, okay, uh, let's look at the number of cars that we made this much money on. Let's look at the number of cars that we made this much money on. Uh, and so in order to do that, we need to find a, a good number of uh, classes that uh, really gives a solid picture of, uh, you know, what was actually sold. Okay, so what we use is a rule t called the 2 to the k is greater than n rule, where k is the number of classes and n is the number of observations. So we want 2 to the k to be greater than the number of classes. So let's take a look at this. Uh, it's kind of just trial and error. It equals 2 to the uh, eighth, if you will. Uh, and that's 256. Well, is 256 greater than 360? No, it's not greater than 360. So let's try again. The number of classes needs to be more than 8. So let's go equals 2 to the 9th. And 2 to the 9th is 512, which is greater than 360. So we really should be using at least 9 different classes. So the next thing that we need to do is determine the class intervals. In other words, how large are the bins going to be? Um, and uh, I kind of got ahead of myself. I'm just going to delete that so that way you don't uh, try to figure out what's going on there. Uh, but the number of classes uh, is 9, so we need to look at the range. And we need to do equals range divided by number of classes. So the bins need to be at least 436.67. Um, but it's really clunky uh, and hard to follow if you have bins that are exactly 436.67 um, because it's, it's hard to say, okay, you know, in this range uh, of 436.67, we, we sold this many cars. It's much easier to do a clean round number like 450. So we do an adjusted class interval. Uh, so 450, so let's start right here. We need to look at the min, 434, and we need to start below that. So we're going to do a uh, 
we're, we're looking at doing a histogram or a frequency distribu distribution um, and starting at, uh, let's start at 200, okay? And then we'll do equals uh, sum 200, or actually it's not 200, but it's the one right above it, and 450. And uh, we need to drag it down, nine more, uh, 4,000. 250 which is that's the max that's going to be the highest point uh, and then that is greater than the max um, and so then we have uh, these are all of our bins so our first bin is between 200 and uh, 650 so it's between this um, so when you see this frequency distributions are mutually uh, exclusive the the classes are so really what this is is 200 and 649.99999 okay and this is 650 and 1099.99999 um and so that's uh what that is okay so the class range let's take a look at this um we're going to do 200 to uh 650 uh 650 to 1100 and just because I don't want to sit there all day long, I actually type these out uh, prior, so that way you don't have to watch me uh, type them. Um, whoops, and I still inevitably mess it up. Uh, 100 to uh, 1550, okay. Um, so these are our class ranges, and now we're going to look at our frequencies. So the way that we do frequencies um, is this really cool formula that says equals frequency. And we need to look at the data array. We're going to click right there. And then the bins array. And you start with the upper limit of the bin and you go down. Bada bing, bada boom. There are a total of 19 cases in this class range. 19 cases in this class range. But how do you get this to populate down here. You can't just uh, go down like this. It doesn't uh, work that way because uh, that's actually, um, well, uh, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, it gives you the wrong data. So what you need to do is you need to highlight the entire uh, range and uh, press F2, then press Control shift enter and it populates everything for you. Okay, so there's 19 in this, 37 in this class range, 73, 90, 68, and let's just make sure that this adds up to 360, some, oops, okay, and it does equal 360, uh, so we're in business. So now we're going to uh, do the uh, histogram or the frequency uh, distribution, if you will. And uh, so you could do the histogram, but the histogram is not going to work on this data. And the reason why is because the histogram, this chart right here, really needs to be done on the original data. So the histogram would work really well, say, if you were to do this. Um, but the reason why we don't do this is because it does the 234 to, to 594 and it's, it's really messy and clunky uh, and it's really hard to change. Uh, so if you want it to be clean, uh, you've got to do it by hand. So we're going to delete that um, and then we're going to do uh, insert and we're actually going to do a clustered column chart. A clustered column chart. We're going to press OK. Uh, we're going to edit this a little bit just to make it um, the way that we want to. You click on this and you can come over here and modify uh, some of the characteristics. And so I want it to look a little bit more like a histogram. So uh, let's see here. Frequency distribution. Okay. And we're going to put this right here. And so now we have uh, your frequency distribution. Um, you can see between 200 and 650, you know, we've got a pretty decent, uh, uh, almost normal distribution. It's a little positively skewed, um, but uh, it's looking pretty good. 
So that's our frequency distribution. Now we're going to uh, go on to the next. Um, we're going to unhide and we're going to look at a uh, relative frequency. Um, in other words, how does this frequency, how is it relative to all of the remainder of the cases? So we, uh, in order to do this, you do equals 19 divided by, remember how many cases are there? There's 360 cases. So um, 19 gives us about 5%, uh, and then you can just bring it down like that, and then equals some... And that will give us a perfect one. And if you wanted to, uh, you can make these into percentages. And um, the way that I did that was I highlighted it, brought it right up here, percentages. Uh, and that gives you your relative frequency or the percentage of the overall um, uh, set. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Um, what are we going to do next? Let's do a frequency polygon. In order to do a frequency polygon, you've got to find the midpoint of uh, each of these points. Um, so let's uh, find the midpoint. The way that we find the midpoint is we go average uh, and you find the average of the bin. Okay, so 425. Bring that down. Uh, and the average is, you know, the midpoint uh, in that bin. And so we're going to do another um, chart insert. And notice I highlighted the midpoint and I highlighted the frequency. Um, and I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to click recommended charts again. And it gives me a scatter plot uh, with connecting points. So um, I'm going to press OK. And here we go, frequency polygon. Now, the problem with this is, this isn't actually a frequency polygon. And I'm going to tell you why. Because a frequency polygon has to hit uh, the zero. Polygons have to be closed. So the way that we do that is we put a zero right here, and we put a zero right here. We put a zero right here, and then uh, we're going to add 450. So we need to uh, do 4,475. Um, and then we are going to close the ends of the frequency polygon. You notice how that works. Um, but let's... Uh, Let's change this a little bit. You kind of want to know what these numbers actually are, right? And so let's uh, click on this. We're going to go to Chart Options. We're going to go to Horizontal Access. Uh, click over here, Access Options. Uh, let's see, we want 4,475 to be the max. 4,475. Okay, uh, and we want the majors, uh, they go in increments, let's see, of 450. But this is a lot cleaner. Um, you're able to do the increments that you want to do, uh, and then you've got them closed off at the end, so this is your frequency polygon. Uh, next, I know that you guys are getting really excited uh, about this. Uh, we are now going to do a cumulative uh, frequency. Okay, so let me just delete that. Uh, in order to do a cumulative frequency, uh, what you need to do is do uh, equals. Okay, whoops. Uh, we need to make the this numbers. Okay, so equals. Okay, then equals sum. Okay, so this is now this plus this. Okay. And you remember a little bit earlier, I showed you, you know, if you do 
uh, let's see, make sure that these are numbers equals frequency data array. Let's go back to the data array bins. Okay, so when you drag it down, what it actually does is gives you the cumulative frequency distribution. The cumulative frequency distribution. Um, and if you want to graph the cumulative frequency distribution, uh, we should start at uh, zero and the midpoints. And we're going to do insert. We're going to do recommended charts, and it's going to be a scatter plot again. Um, and you see this is a cumulative frequency polygon. Um, however, let's see here, I've got to, uh, there we go. Um, now, there's a few issues with this cumulative frequency polygon that we need to remedy. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on this bottom part right here. We're going to go to the axis option. And we're going to do maximum of 40, 25. And we're going to uh, do minimum of negative 25. Uh, we're going to do the increments of 450. And that gives us the cumulative frequency polygon from 0% all the way up to 100%. Um, and you can see this right here um, is the number of cars sold. Uh, and this down here is um, the amount at which they were sold or the profit that... Um, they made on each car. So that is a cumulative frequency polygon. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me. I hope that uh, this was beneficial for you. Um, and let's see here. I feel like I should give you guys this file so that way you can play around with it as well. Uh, so I'll be attaching this file and you guys can play around with this and uh, figure out what you're doing. Thanks. Bye.